Okay, ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to the first of my photographic tutorial sessions. My name is Paul Barker and for 25 years now I've worked as a professional photographer, mostly for the English national newspapers, uh, but also for the international agencies. What's the first thing we normally have to decide on whenever we go out? If you think, that's it. You know, in the old days of film, we had to decide what speed film we were going to put in the camera. Now, I would say we're probably 400 today. You know, it's not super bright, but it's brightish. Well, this is what I like to call the good picture buzz. This is that moment where it's not that you're recording a group of people at a wedding. It's when you look at a scene and you think, wow, that would make a great picture. See when it looks like a good picture, the relative arrangement of the things within the frame looks pleasing to the eye. And you can kind of base it on this rule of thirds idea. So my foreground subject is fundamentally one third of the frame and my background, which is the parsonage, are the other, is the other two thirds of the frame. So realistically, I could call my courses beyond snapshots we want to move beyond snapshots both technically we want to our pictures to look good from a, a technical point of view but i also would like people to start thinking a lot more about the pictures that they're taking I think wide angle here so you know zoom out yeah and then move yourself in to compose the picture That's it. No, zoom out and move in. No zooming. Okay. Zooming is out. Okay. Zoom for the button. <laughs> zoom wide, move in. Okay. Yeah. Now, I'd like a show of hands, please. Anybody who's actually ever taken their camera off automatic. You are not alone, okay? The vast majority of people that I teach have rarely, if ever, gone off that full automatic setting where basically the camera sort of does all the thinking for them. Unless we're gonna hang on for like another hour or so, getting this picture of the train coming into the station is a bit of a, a one-shot deal. So we need to figure it out first. You need to also have a reasonably fast shutter speed sort of 250th of a second or so in your continuous focus mode and then pick your spot do a couple of test pictures see if it looks right sort of exposure give it a little bit of plus or a little bit of minus depending on how you think it looks so I'm going to go for this on a long lens So let's say it's that f number on the front is what you want in focus, really. Yeah, fantastic. great for having the tracks in it as well yeah, yeah so speaking technically what would you say is the most important element of a good photograph forget about lighting composition for the moment technically speaking what is the most important thing yes focus is part of it but here's the picture that I normally use to actually illustrate this. Has anyone ever seen that before? I'm seeing some nodding heads here. Yes, that's good. That is, uh, this picture is called Afghan Girl and it's by a photographer called Steve McCurry, who's a National Geographic staff photographer. So he really does know what he's on about. Now, it's a fantastic picture. And this is one of the most famous National Geographic front covers of all time. As a portrait, it's terrific. You can see this girl has had such a hard life. 
the tear in her shawl, the expression on her face. So it's a fantastic portrait, but what is it technically that stands out? That's it, the eyes. The eyes are absolutely pin sharp. It's more than just being in focus. It's absolutely pin sharp. And when we're taking a picture of a person, the most important thing that we get sharp is the eyes. The more you zoom in, the less depth of field you have. So on your 18 mil lens, you've got tons of depth of field. On your 200 mil lens, you've got virtually none. Things are either sharp or they're not sharp to the extent where if I focus on you now and I focus on your eyes, your ears are just about in focus. <laughs>